All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the party. <laughs> Today is Thursday, January 26th. This is episode... Hold on. Hold on. Made my screens too small. Episode 290, winner, winner, chicken dinner of Simply Cyber's daily cyber threat briefing. I'm your host, Dr. Gerald Lozier, and over the next 45 minutes in this threat briefing, me, you... Nathan Bolin, Morehouse Hacks, Pellant, Matthew Necci, Christine, Kent, Carl, Ron, Anna Lynn, and all of you in chat are going to be tearing up the hottest, most relevant, most current cybersecurity news stories of the day. And I'll be giving my opinion, my analysis on each of those stories on what you can do to operationalize it at work this week or next week or in kind of the macro picture. Or if you're looking to break into the industry, buckle up, friend because there's going to be so much value. It's going to be coming out your ears. Go get some extra jars because you're going to fill those up too. Cork them, put them on the shelf. And when you need value, you just uncork it, dump it on yourself. It's going to be fantastic, all right? You're going to understand terminology, macro pictures, threat actor names, uh, all of the threat actors' names, As you, you, for those of you who know that that really bothers me. Um, but before we dig into the show, before we start pouring value pools all over everybody, let me say what's up to the stream sponsor, starting with my good friend, Eric Taylor, and the group at Barricade Cyber Solutions. Barricade Cyber Solutions is dedicated to helping businesses uh, from cyber attacks and recover from the damage done. Nasty business, what those cyber attacks do. Cyber attacks can cause massive issues for businesses and send dedicated, hardworking business owners into turmoil. But Barricade Cyber Solutions knows how to mitigate the damage done by cyber incidents. You know what Barricade Cyber does to threat actors? <laughs> Boom, baby. Check them out at barricadecyber.com. Links in the description below. This is their website. This is Eric Taylor, key stakeholder over there. Click on this date and time that works for you. He even does in the evening for Eastern Standard Time so he can accommodate you left coast people who are probably watching on replay. <laughs> um, dude, Barricade Cyber Solutions, do yourself a favor. Spend 30 minutes investing in the future state of your cybersecurity program by getting on the phone and having a fire department to call in case bad stuff happens. Love what Barricade Cyber is doing over there. Huge fan of Eric Taylor. If you guys have been a fan or a member of the Simply Cyber community for some time, you know Eric, you know he's legit. Also want to say what's up? And much love. Thank you, Recon InfoSec, for the continued stream support. If you are in need of a service that provides your org with 24-7 managed detection and response MDR services, consider Recon InfoSec in your pool. Most people, when they're evaluating MDRs, they'll pick like, you know, like they'll Google like a bunch. Then they'll narrow it down to like three. Then they have calls. What's your pricing? What's your onboarding? Who are your people? What's it look like? Guys, you should only be looking for two because Recon InfoSec should be your automatic third one. Their MDR service is dope. It's transparent. It includes people process technology. You get access to the analysts, the engineers, the architect. If you want to get your hands dirty, you want to roll up your sleeves and get up into the sim, go ahead. They'll help you with that. Most times when you're hiring an MDR, it's because you want to roll your sleeves down, put on a business jacket, and go into the meeting and talk to the management about getting money and all this other stuff. But you can't go in there. You can't prepare your slides because you're too busy tamping out whack-a-moles over here on the SOC um, SecOps side. That's what MDR does, guys. You outsource that pain point, that friction, and bonus, you reduce cyber risk. MDR is awesome. Recon InfoSec is awesome. Go to reconinfosec.com if you want to check them out. I strongly encourage uh, you check out MDR. Even if it's just to have a conversation, they are security people. They're practitioners. They can have conversations and talk about it. It's not like, you know, it's it's not one of these ones. I hate this. Like where you like line up with the vendor and then all of a sudden you get a sales guy hammering you every single day. And I'm all due respect to the sales guys, but you know what I'm talking about. You're just like peppering. People don't, that's what scares people away from even like reaching out to a vendor just to have a conversation. Recon InfoSec isn't that way. Check them out. MDR for life. Each episode of the Daily Cyber Threat Briefing is worth half a CPE. So say what's up in chat. Say what's up 
Uh, in the comments, hashtag Team Live, if you're live with us, I see 78, 85 of you right now. It's Tuesday, Thursday. The time shift's always difficult for folks. If you're watching on replay, hashtag Team Replay in the comments. I got to tell you, I do love going back and looking at the comments. I see the Team Replay. Many people do that, but then a lot of people will provide their own kind of personality into the comments. And I, I, I put hearts on those. Uh, so if you're getting hearts, that's why. Thank you. Uh, very much. All right, guys. It's 10.05 Eastern time. I'm not jaw jacking up in here, but I am pretty excited about the day. Want to say what's up to Lego Sack, Morehouse Hacks, Tom Bishop, Haircut Fish. I hope your new job is going well, my friend. I'm, I'm pretty sure you started. We've got What's Your Meme Thursday. We've got a banger today. Um, thought it might be b -Sack riding a tornado. Uh, cowboy style. He is from Texas, but alas, it's not. But it is equally awesome. So stay tuned for the mid roll. But for now, sit back, relax, and let the cool sounds of cybersecurity news lull you into a vibe. And that does it for today's cybersecurity Whoops. headlines. And Jerry it. forgot to clear out yesterday's story. So stay, <laughs> stay tuned. Stay tuned. Do, do, do. From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity. These aren't headlines. the droids you're looking for. <laughs> this isn't the yesterday's cyber briefing. It's Thursday, January 26th, 2023. A look at North Korean crypto stealing tactics. The record's Jonathan Grieg broke down a recent report on these tactics from Proofpoint, highlighting the work of the APT TA444. The report describes the group as working with a startup mentality and a passion for cryptocurrency. While the group's activities overlap with other North Korean linked threat actors like Lazarus Group, it stands out as seemingly only interested in generating revenue rather than things like cyber espionage. In the past, the group spread malware through malicious documents, but in 2022, it expanded to using email marketing tools. These tools allow it to more easily get past spam filters and seem legitimate. It combines this with aggressive social media strategies, contacting potential victims on LinkedIn with fake job offers. The United States Treasury Department estimates the group used various cryptocurrency mixers to launder over $120 million. Nice. Wicka, wicka, wow. Also, hey, as a, as a programming note, yesterday when Alyssa Knight uh, was in chat, I said she um, kicks a hole in the speaker, pulls the plug, and then jet. And I said, if you like Wu-Tang, after the stream, I felt like an idiot. That's Eric B. and Rakim. All right, so if you're old school, golden age hip hop, you know what I'm talking about. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Okay, so North Korea uh, ever expanding into their desire for crypto. I'm a crypto evangelist. I love it, love it, love it. Thank you, Finn Frock. So North Korea, Lazarus Group is the darling of the North Korean hackers. They get all the pub. But there is another, you know, um, stepsister, or there's another stooge in the Three Stooges, right? It's not just all curly, right? There is Larry there, okay? And this group in North Korea um, is is the Larry of the Three Stooges going on over there, okay? So we've seen this for some time. Their MO is to target individuals. So Lazarus Group typically targets businesses, right? Big game hunting, big big money, okay? This threat actor group inside North Korea targets individuals and they basically use classic social engineering techniques. Who doesn't want more money, right? Great cash, homie. So they use these fake job offers and say, hey, like we, you know, they probably pull them along a little bit. Maybe I've even heard examples of this threat actor group actually um, delivering malware to individuals and saying, like, oh, hey, we need you to complete a technical challenge a technical evaluation solve this cyber puzzle uh here's the uh application go ahead and run it and you know you'll see what's in there and i don't know if the puzzle actually works or anything but what it does do is install malware information stealing malware on the endpoint or on the victim and straight up rips their creds rips their tokens rips their bitcoin wallet all, all the all the things that you don't want a bad guy getting it does all that right so th there's been that um you know they are passing through PDFs. I, you know, I don't know if this, if I had to guess, you know, this is probably not a real PDF. This is probably a picture. This button is probably, all of this is probably just a picture with a link to like a Google Drive or something like that. Like, or, or it's just a piece of malware and they've stuck the PDF logo there. Um, threat actors 
uh, want to make it look as appealing and as interesting as possible. When you see stuff like this, you should be very cautious. Now, one thing for practitioners to be mindful of, but by the way, the other thing I want to point out is when you attack individuals, there's less likelihood of uh, repercussions, right? So like if someone steals my crypto wallet, what am I going to do? Just yell into the void, right? I'm not going to attack North Korea. I don't have corporate insurance. I don't have FBI hackbacks, right? So, but but the trade-off is I'm less likely to have the same amount of money as like the Axie Infinity Ronin Bridge, which was like $600 million, right? I'm going to have like, you know, 80 bucks and like a couple like cool, you know, pesos from my trip in Cancun, right? So you're like, your your return on your investment is pretty low, but you know, whatever these guys, they send out a bunch of fake offers. They, they scope up a bunch of money, whatever. Um, it sucks. Here's the thing. This is a good opportunity to educate your end users. It's a very tricky, it's a very tricky situation because think about this for a second. When you are looking for a job, right? Right now we talk about overemployment. We talk about quiet quitting, Right. We talk about all these different things that's going on in the in the career market right now. When you're looking for a job, you are being super secretive. You're being super discreet because you don't want your employer to find out. In most instances, right? Sometimes you're just like, I ha I hate this place. <laughs> I'm trying to get another job. Um, but for the most part, you're being discreet. You're taking the interview in the in the parking lot on your phone. You're calling out sick so you can go to a job interview. Like you're doing all the things to be like discreet and not let your employer know. So when things like this happen, you're not telling your employer. So if it's getting through security controls, it's getting it, all these things, um, it, it's a good way to attack. And you might not even say anything, honestly, because you're not wanting your employer to know. You're not wanting people to know. So that's a clever technique. Uh, it's like a double win for North Korea. One, because they get you with the extra money and then they get you because you're not going to tell anyone. What I would advise you to do, and this is kind of counterintuitive to mainstream corporate culture, but I would advise you to share with your end users, this might be the story of the week on Monday. I might, I'd share with your end users that this is happening and be mind, especially guys, especially in the FinTech space, right? If you work in FinTech, like this is all up in it, but just educate people. You don't have to get into the crypto theft and the info stealer. Just tell people that, hey, uh, threat actor groups, are sending out fake job offers with really, really appealing offers. And the trick is to get you to open it and infect your machine and then bad stuff happens. So just be mindful, if it's too good to be true, it is. Russia saw record DDoS attacks. A new report from the Russian telco Rostelecom disclosed that in 2022, it identified 21.5 million critical web attacks, with DDoS attacks impacting 600 organizations in the country across private business and state services. Russian government services accounted for 30% of all DDoS attacks, while total DDoS attacks were up 12 times from the previous year. Hmm. While one attack lasted over three months, most were not very powerful or long-lasting. The Russian service DLBI also estimates that in the last year, data leaks impacted 75% of all Russian citizens. Wow. So this is actually quite interesting. Oh, geez, I forgot the screen. This is actually quite interesting to me. Uh, and surprising, I you know, comment and chat it, um, if if you have a thought on this. Russia suffered the most DDoS attacks last year. This is kind of compelling. I so there is a distributed denial of service capability from a group called Killnet. Okay, and they're very very like public and very very like you know out out there as far as like look what we did. We are awesome. Blah. Right, Killnet DDoS. Right. Right here, dark reading. I just Killnet gloats about DDoS attacks. This is from November 29th. Okay, so just like you know, whatever, eight weeks ago. Um, these guys have been all up in it. This is a Russia-backed distributed denial of service capability, right? And it's attacking things that have been in support of Ukraine. So when we hear a story that Russia suffered the the highest number of attacks last year, that's interesting. The only thing I could think of is that um. When so in the, in 2022 in in March, you know Russia inv invades Ukraine. Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, asks for help at the, at the nation state level. He doesn't get it, or he gets it in some like kind of indirect way, so NATO isn't get brought in and everything like this. But then Zelensky asks the people of the world, hashtag IT Army, help me. We'll drop in um, targets and you hit them, right? 
So I, if you know, this is speculation, but I suspect that the reason Russia suffered the most DDoS attacks last year was because Ukraine weaponized, like you know, basically like Howard Dean grassroots campaign to um, weaponize a militia of digital army people to attack through distributed denial of service. Which, by the way, you can't you can't really stop a distributed denial of service attack from happening. A distributed denial of service, just so we're all on the same page is when multiple endpoints attack or send a massive amount of data to a single IP or IP range, okay? Now, normally this is done through, like KillNet will have a bunch of compromised hosts, right? So your Nest thermostats and your iPhone and, and, and like all these things are running like little agents checking in with KillNet and KillNet says, attack this IP address. And everybody goes, Bleh! and gets all up on that IP address and knocks it over, right? There's so much traffic that legitimate users cannot access the resource, and that's why it's denied service. It's distributed because there's a lot of endpoints. Now, with the Ukrainian IT army one, you didn't have to compromise assets. People were voluntarily getting involved in wanting to be part of that, right? We've seen it with... um. It, 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 it's like you opt into it, right? Okay, so... I think if I had to guess, that's what happened. Now, also, I do want to put a grain of salt in here. Um, this report was published by Russia's largest telecom, which I find even more interesting. This was a report from a Russian business about how Russia suffered the, the biggest number of attacks last year. You would think that since Russia's in a military conflict right now, they would not want to indicate a weakness unless they were weaponizing this for empathy or for sourcing assistance from other countries like look how bad we're getting it i don't know i don't get into the geopolitical aspects of it but i do find this interesting um specifically because how killnet was uh acting on behalf of russia china leads in facial recognition tech exports the Brookings institution published a new study from harvard and mit looking at technology exports by country it found China led all exports of facial recognition technology with 201 deals involving sending it abroad. U.S. firms came in second with 128 deals. China also led the U.S. in AI export deals with 250 export deals compared to 136. Combined, the two countries accounted for 23.5% of all AI export deals. One of the report's authors, Harvard economist David Yang, said while recent U.S. foreign policy seems to limit China's development of new capabilities, it generally doesn't limit the transfer of existing tech. China can lead facial recognition exports because it already developed a comprehensive suite of surveillance AI tech that it can sell. Yeah, exactly. By the way, happy uh, Australia Day, uh, Funky Monk. Also, happy Republic Day to our Indian population here in chat. Okay, so like from from the from the desk of not not a um not a shocker, China is the world's biggest face recognition dealer. They are an authoritative uh, surveillance state. They developed this tech in house, allegedly. I quote unquote allegedly they are. I, I don't know where they rank, but they are, according to FBI indictments, they are pretty strong at intellectual property t around technology, espionage and theft, also around healthcare theft. Um, so they've got a lot going for them. So I'm not surprised that they lead in <laughs> face recognition software. Also, I, I think this guy is from, um, I think this guy is from China. But this dude right here, um, if you don't know about Clearview AI, Clearview AI, Google it. I'll put it in chat right now. Clearview AI. This thing, this thing is nuts. Watch a YouTube video on how this thing works, okay? So let's use this level of technology and then let's put it in these glasses. You see this woman wearing glasses with a little, you know, this is like basically Google Glass-ish and she's the police. Guys, think about this for a hot minute, right? Think about this for a hot minute. Once this becomes mainstream, they say it's for law enforcement only, but it's just a matter of time. Dude, how, how, who wouldn't buy this technology? You put on your glasses, right? You're walking around and you're getting like an augmented reality feed of it recognizes Kimberly's face, right? Like I'm in an airport and it's like, ding, 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 ding. I see Kimberly's face and then brrr, like, here's a bunch of 
public information on Kimberly, right? Like, oh, hey, Kimberly, or like it notifies you, like you're you're friends with um, Joel Belton, who's friends with Kimberly. Like you guys may have a connection, right? Oh, I can walk right up. Of course, you can get really creepy where it's like, you know, dude, here's the stuff. And then like, here's where she lives or like, here's like her preferences or here's her family. Oh, hey, Kimberly, your brother's been involved in a really terrible accident. I was sent to get you, get in my car, right? Like there's all sorts of like creepy, creepy applications, right? But then there's also like scary political control applications, right? Put the same glasses on the person. They're walking and it's like, ding, 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 ding. This person's a political activist against the mainstream media. Ding. Hey, you need to come with us. Like people disappearing and stuff like that. There's so many freaking scary applications beyond the the novel, like, ugh, you know, like, like, oh, this person was kidnapped 10 years ago and they escaped, but now they've been a missing person and like, ding, they get caught and we return them to their family. Like that's the feel good story that gets overlaid but um, providing this level of capability into an authoritative nation state is, is, is really scary. Not because you're going to catch bad guys, but because it, 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 further, it, it further harnesses the opportunity for control of dissent, right? If you have a dissenting opinion, if you have a counter um, philosophy of whatever the ruling party is, then you can be identified and squashed, right? Scary, scary guys, scary. Kronos malware reemerges. Experts believe Kronos malware emerged from leaked Zeus malware source code sold to Russian actors back in 2011. A newer variant emerged in 2014. It served as a vector for downloading other malware. After that, it emerged again in 2018 as a banking trojan referred to as Osiris. This contains some differences, but used the same underlying techniques. The latest resurrection of this malware seems to have come in the last year, attacking financial institutions as a malicious Chrome extension named Seguridad. The variant looks to steal sensitive information from a device, like login credentials and tokens. Security intelligence reports attackers successfully used it against a financial institution in Mexico. All right. And now a word from our... So a couple of things here. One, Kronos malware sold in 2014 for seven grand. It's a banking Trojan, probably. I know you guys can't see that. Um, it was based on Zeus. Um, and it's made a reemergence. A couple of things that jump out to me. It's like, dude, a piece of malware that went dormant that is eight years old is still effective today. That sucks, right? That means that we haven't really made good trends or good positive growth in eight years to stop something like this from happening. Secondly, um, I'm not super familiar with the Zeus malware, which Kronos grew out of, but I'm almost positive. Yes, I am positive. There is a Darknet Diaries episode on Zeus, Banking Trojan. Um, this Trojan became so big that it resulted in one of the biggest FBI operations ever. I'm going to put this link in here. Jack Recider, I, I know most of you know about Darknet Diaries and Jack Recider, but this is an episode on Zeus. Definitely worth your time, especially with Kronos reemerging. If, it, like, again, do you have the time to do this? If you want to. Be more enabled, more, I guess if you want to be better equipped to, to handle a conversation or something around this, do something like listen to this Zeus malware episode, then read a little bit about how Kronos evolved out of Zeus and you'll be killing it. If, if like Kronos just reemerged, so this is on people's radar, right? I'm telling you right now, like this is good for practitioners to be mindful of what this thing does. But dude, if you're looking at interviewing for jobs and stuff and you drop understanding of Zeus and how Kronos grew from it and how Kronos just reemerged, again, this is one of those things where the interviewer is going to start taking notes based on what you're telling them. They're like, oh my God, if we're Zeus and then Kronos, re oh, this is Kronos reemerged. Blah, 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 blah. Right? Control the conversation in your interview. Don't just fire, you know, question, answer, question, answer, right? Be an, be uh, knowledgeable, be a subject matter expert, right? We're not all experts. Don't have imposter syndrome. Like there's tons of stuff I don't know anything about, but by, by doing this kind of research, y'all, you're, you're up to date on what is current and you understand the history of it. I'm telling you, like th these type of things that blow interviewers minds. Our sponsor, SafeBase. These days, customer trust can be an organization's strongest competitive advantage. But how can you develop and maintain customer trust over the long term? The answer is SafeBase. 
After implementing SafeBase's Smart Trust Center, many companies see shorter deal cycles, higher value contracts, and stronger long-term customer relationships. Some even achieve a 90% reduction in security questionnaires. Learn more at SafeBase.com. All right, hey, really quickly, uh, someone asked if this if Zeus was the Marcus Hutchinson's thing. I don't think so. Uh, oh yeah, look at this. He was he was spreading Kronos. Yeah, so Hutchinson's is gonna get um, tied in the story. Malware tech blog made he he like blew up on the scene um, because he was the individual who found the WannaCry kill switch in the in the like when he reversed the WannaCry binary, the kill switch domain name was right there. He registered it. He basically stopped WannaCry, essentially. Um, and then like, uh, I don't know, maybe four months later, got arrested by the FBI in Vegas. Um, so he had a really, really, um, busy year in 20, I think it was 2017, 2017 is when WannaCry exploded. Um, yeah, see 2017. And then, uh, he got arrested in 2017. Yeah. In Vegas at DEF CON. Okay. Anyways. Yeah. So good call. Good call. Listen to the Zeus thing. It is the mid-roll, so let's do that. Hey, 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 hey! All right, y'all. I want to say thank you all very much for being here. Per usual, if you're having a good time, and we are having a good time, if you're getting educational value from the stream, if you're getting entertainment value from the stream, if you've been a member of the Simply Cyber community, I genuinely appreciate it and ask for one small favor. Take a hot second and hit the like button. It goes a long way at helping YouTube understand that this is a show that cybersecurity people like and people who search for cybersecurity content. So it will go find more cybersecurity people and bring them in here, okay? Thanks again to Barricade Cyber Solutions and Recon InfoSec for their continued support of the show. <clears throat> um. Thank you to all of you. Thank you to the, the squad members. I do want to remind everybody, if you want to get some excellent value, go on over to simplycyber.io slash newsletter and sign up for the newsletter that I send every single Monday morning at 6 a.m. to help you out, help you crush your job at work. Um, only 130 of you in here today. On the jaw jacking section, we're going to do a little bit of fun, hopefully. I'm not sure if I can do that, but... We'll, we'll give it a shot. Uh, I do want to uh, do What's Your Meme Thursday. Dan Reardon in chat, known as The Haircut Fish. Every single Thursday, he provides us with um, a meme, and today is no different. Okay, so here we go. Just as a little backstory, y'all. Um, Cody Kinsey is a really well-known security researcher, content creator. He's a really cool guy, and he's a, he's a great member of our community. And he has a show called Security FWD, and uh, through that show, like, we got connected. And he's going to be coming on stream, uh, I think, February 16th, right? And I'm very, very excited. I love all the guests that come on Simply Cyber, but I'm really excited. I really enjoy Cody's content, and I'm really looking forward to meeting him. So like when I confirmed that he was coming, I flipped out and lost it. Uh, and I went Super Saiyan. I went full, full Super Saiyan. I was just like, ah! So Dan Reardon put together the meme for this week. Uh, this is this is me reacting to Cody Kinsey coming on, <laughs> coming on as a guest. He is awesome. I can't wait to talk over him. Yes, I went I went full over 9,000. Hair turned, everything. It was, uh, it was insane. Yeah, Adam Frank, I'm gonna do a bonus story. Um, I'm gonna do a bonus story at the end. All right, thank you all so very much. Let's get back into the news, shall we? India's new mobile OS makes big security claims. India continues to maintain a contentious relationship with tech platforms, including mobile operating systems like Android. That OS dominates the Indian market. A recent Supreme Court ruling will see Google opening up the Play Store more broadly in the country. But last week, the Indian Institute of Technology announced a new mobile OS called BarOS, aimed as a homegrown alternative. India's Minister for Education and Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, Dharmedra Pradhan, demonstrated it this week. Pradhan claimed the OS shipped with no preloaded apps, shared no user data, and worked with private app stores. He also claims the OS couldn't run malware, but provided no details about how this is even remotely possible. Screenshots of the OS show what looks like the Android keyboard app with design elements that look very similar to Android. 
prior reporting, also says it's based on the Linux kernel, so it would seem malware would be eminently possible on the platform. Hack. <laughs> okay, so a couple things here. Okay, like let's. Okay, a couple things here. One, India has their own mobile OS. Okay, fine, fine, fine. It's a Linux variant. Fine. I'm all about um, open market, free market, uh, best of breed. I, I think capitalism and, and free markets is actually a good way to promote innovation, promote, um, you know, uh, you, you know, good products and stuff like that. Okay. So India coming out with their own OS, no big deal, right? <clears throat> now, a couple things I want to point out. First and foremost, this statement right here, incapable of running malware, is laughable. Okay. I appreciate it comes to no preloaded apps. I appreciate that it, you can only do like app store stuff or whatever. Th this is not possible, guys. Malware isn't like, it's not like, it's not like um, legitimate apps are water and malware is lava. And you can be like, well, we don't want lava here. So it's easy to say that this is water and this is lava. Guys, malware is just software. It's just software that does things that could be perceived as bad. It's good for the good guy. I mean, it's good for the bad guy and it's bad for the good guy, okay? That's all malware is. So you cannot distinguish between good software and bad software. For example, this operating system clearly is going to have to do things like make network connections, create users, read files, write files, take input from the, the user, display web pages. These are all normal things, right? So if you, like, and you're allowed to install apps, right? So if you install an app that allows remote access, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, if you know who's remotely accessing it, then it's a good thing. If a malicious person's remotely accessing it, then it's a bad thing. It's the same program. You cannot distinguish between the use case of the software, which is what makes it malware, right? It's ridiculous, dude. Like, like you can delete a file on a phone. Can you not delete files on this operating system? Because if you can't delete files, then yeah, wiper malwares aren't gonna work. But if you can delete a file, then you can delete two files, then you can delete n files. If you can delete n files, then a wiper malware can delete n files. So get out of here with this nonsense. And by the way, it doesn't happen often. It doesn't happen often. But when a business makes a claim like this, you are inviting really smart people to come right for you. This right here is a huge bullseye that they're putting on this thing, like without question. If a CISO says that our business is unhackable, they're going to get hacked. If you're the CEO of LifeLock, identity theft protection, and you put your social security number on a billboard and drive it through New York City, expect to get your identity stolen, which happened 13 times to that guy. True story. Google it. Don't, don't poke the bear, man. Don't poke the bear. How about just say it's really secure? How about just say like it's, it's, it's got privacy and security in mind? Don't. Like these absolute ultimatums are ridiculous. Okay. The other thing I wanted to point out briefly is, you know, it's, it's possible that this is a state sponsored operating system that will allow backdoors uh, for government to um, intervene, which would be the absolute opus, opposite of what it's saying. But that's complete speculation. That's just based on some of the things I've heard about the, uh, the government of India and how they're approaching uh, some of their policies out there. Okay, that's it. WordPress sites redirect to ad pages. According to a new report from Sukuri, a recent campaign infected WordPress sites with a malicious index.php file. This initially sent users to fake CAPTCHA scam pages, but recently switched to sending visitors to sketchy ad networks. Some of the ads include ones for malicious ad blockers that actually spur installing more malware on a system. This campaign seems like it goes back to at least 2017, but recently increased activity in December 2022 to impact over 3,600 sites. All right. Blackberry stop. Yeah, so Security, if you don't know, I haven't used it much, but if you do run web apps at your business or whatever, I'm like almost positive Security 
offers like a web app scanner. It's one of those ones where you can like use it for free and you get limited functionality. And then obviously the upsell is full functionality. But I do remember using it at one point and thinking it was like notably not terrible. Uh, so anybody with thoughts on security, um, holler at and chat for, for those. Um, Infections involve the injection of obfuscated JavaScript. Obfuscated means that you can't read it very easily, uh, but the, the the computer can you know e evaluate and execute it pretty easily because the computer doesn't care. Uh, hosted on a malicious domain, so you'd have to trick a user to going over to it. Um, the rogue code's inserted to the WordPress index file. All right, so basically, threat actors are able to get access somehow to a WordPress site. Um, and um, insert a redirect or a JavaScript redirect into it. So basically you go to safe, you know, really safe trusted site.com and it's been compromised and it just redirects you to a malicious site, which is, you know, doing stuff. Pretty straightforward. 4,500 uh, WordPress sites hacked. That's not huge. I mean, it's a big number, but it's not really that big in the, in the grand scheme of WordPress sites. The interesting thing is that it's been going on since 2017. You would think that like people would either decommission their WordPress sites or have updated their WordPress sites uh, to cover this vulnerability in the last five years. So, oh, oh, and it's one of those. It's one of these like pop-ups. Um, if you guys have, all right, so the redirect sends you to this one where it's like, call Microsoft, your computer is screwed. Um, this doesn't trick people like us because we're smart people, but this will trick less technical people. <gasps> this will get you on the phone with a, um, a, a, a call center scammer, and then they'll have you install remote access, uh, and then they'll slowly start robbing you. So be careful. 62 unique malware samples a minute. That finding comes from the company's quarterly threat intelligence report, which disclosed it stopped 1.75 million malware attacks in the last 90 days. The most common malware used came from Emotet, the Quackbot phishing network, and the Goo Loader info stealer. The report also found that, despite its reputation, attackers continue to find ways of targeting macOS. It found the data stealer Doc2 Master, the most commonly installed app, and found the app at 34% of client organizations using macOS on their networks. Yahoo is back. Okay, so a couple things here. Just like Bar OS is says it's incapable of running malware. A lot of people have the misconception that Mac OS is somehow not capable of running malware. It is. It's just a Linux operating system, people. It's not like some special, you know, like it wasn't sent down from a you know Mount Olympia from the gods. So like here you go. Here's an operating system that's you know immune to vulnerabilities, right? So. Um, that's that's interesting. What is not so? This is basically a report from um, BlackBerry, which now owns Silence. Most people think of BlackBerry; they think of like the mobile phone. But they bought Silence a few years ago. I'm pretty sure. Hold on one second. I'm pretty. Sure, I'm like almost. I'm almost positive. <laughs> I'm I'm positive now. <laughs> Silence is BlackBerry cybersecurity. So BlackBerry's got like legit uh, chops when they when they report on this. So this is legit, okay? Um, so th the findings in this report are legit. So I, I would actually say, like, you know, if you're interested in a good threat intelligence report, um, go ahead and check this out. I'll put a link in chat right now. I haven't followed this link, so, you know, proceed with caution. Um, two notable things here. One, Redline Info Stealer, most active and widespread info stealer. This is absolutely true. Redline is rampant right now. It's a commodity-based malware that steals your creds, your tokens, your 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 wallet, all that stuff, um, crypto wallets. So be mindful of that. Your EDR should definitely catch Redline Stealer. You can download. Um, do not go to Malware Bazaar if you don't know what you're doing. But you can go to Malware Bazaar and actually download. Um, a copy of Redline Info Stealer and run it in a lab if you want to check the, your um, your EDR efficacy. Oh, hold on one second. Do I have to do tag Redline? There we go. Come on, boy. I don't know why it's not pulling it up, guys. You know what? I bet you if I just do, <laughs> if I just look at 
the malware database. There's probably a red line right up in the, somewhere right in here. Yeah, let's see if there's red line in here. Yeah, all I had to do is type red and it shows up right there, right? Like, no surprise. Right there. You could pull down an instance, check if your EDR runs it. This thing is rampant everywhere. VX Underground is another popular site for pulling malware. Don't, don't, again, if you don't know anything about malware, take a class, take TCM's or uh, Matt Kiley's PMAT, uh, Practical Malware Analysis and Triage class. Get some education before you start messing with malware. Do not detonate malware on your on your root system. Do it in the lab, do it in a VM, do it in a uh, AWS box. Shred the, shred, shred the uh, box after you're done with it. Okay, I, I've done the best I can to, to protect you. Um, the other thing is that Qbot and Emotet took up the most, like obviously Qbot surpassed Emotet as the number one malware uh, variant seen in the wild. So this is just a nice little wrap up um, of the quarterly threat intelligence reporting. So if you're looking to, basically the way I would use this to operationalize my information security program is I would read this report and look at the top threats and then think about how those threats are realized by threat actors, right? And then think about the controls in your environment and are they actually addressing those risks, right? So Emotet, Quack, uh, Qbot, does your EDR catch it? How are they normally delivered? They're normally delivered through email. So is your email doing URL rewriting? Do you have an exchange online protection? Are you doing phishing? Are you educating your people on the on the techniques that Emotet and Qbot use to trick and socially engineer people into loading them? These are the things that you would do with this report. Don't just read this report and be like, oh, that's interesting right? If you work in information security, use this information to inform your thoughts on what you should be doing next, okay? Unless you're not doing basics like MFA or something like that, then get that, get on that. On top with phishing. Checkpoint released its report on the most spoofed brands for Q4 2022. It found that Yahoo overtook DHL as the most imitated brand used in 20% of all phishing attempts in the wild. Malicious emails tried to entice click-through by offering prize money from Yahoo content. DHL only moved down one of the list to 16% of all phishing attempts, while Microsoft came in third. Overall, Checkpoint found that the tech industry saw the most brand imitators in phishing messages, followed by shipping brands and social networks. Okay. Given that your company... All right, so that sounds pretty good. Hold on, I want to play some music now since it's the last story and I get the opportunity to play music. Yoink! Yoink! All right, so... Um, this last story, DHL overtakes Yahoo. This one's pretty straightforward, guys. Basically, they're saying that a lot of phishing emails, a majority, are using Yahoo as the fake business that you're coming from. DHL has been reign supreme for a long time. We don't see it too much in the United States, but I know in Europe and Asia and stuff, DHL is all up in your face. Uh, the idea is like, oh, hey, like, it's a straight phishing email. Oh, hey, like here's your package. Your package is going to be late. Oh, your package is being returned. Oh, your package was delivered to the wrong address. Click here to, you know, get more information. Click here to find out, right? Writing like you've won a million dollars, click here, doesn't work for people anymore. They've realized that that's BS, but people are getting a lot of packages delivered through Amazon, through, you know, whatever. So with the frequency of messages coming from delivery services, you know, it's easy to jump into the fray and try to get, you know, get past somebody's like defenses. But Yahoo's taken over. Um, I do find it interesting. Uh, this is going to sound, um, Harish, big time where? In India? Where, where are you, Harish? Um, here's one interesting thing for me, okay? Yahoo overtakes the DHL as the most ripped off brand. Guys, it's in 2023, if you asked me, like, like what brand like should you go for like yahoo wouldn't be it like i'm i'm actually surprised and this is a good reason why we do threat intelligence briefings i would never in a million years think yahoo would be the number one but here it is this is a fact why would i think that because it's like when i see somebody with an aol email address i'm like oh my god like what like what are you like i in my mind yahoo's like on the has been on the decline for years so i don't know why it's overtaking uh, exactly, pull on, like exactly. But hey, you know what? Some threat actor or some threat actor group somewhere, they must have had their annual criminal con uh, at the end of Q4 2022. And they're like, hey, let's get together and decide where we're going to go. Let's do Yahoo. Yeah. And like everybody high fives. And then 
you know, the minions show up. <laughs> Anyways, be mindful of this. You may also want to educate your end users on be leery of Yahoo related emails. Um, okay. Also, hey, we've got a bonus story I want to drop. This is coming in hot off the presses. So if you were here for the news, stay, stay with us because this is happening right now. Apparently, the FBI... The FBI has seized Hive. Looks like they did it with... Um, the FBI and United States Attorney's Office from Middle District of Florida. So way to go, Florida. We're looking at you. Um, Orlando. Palm Bay. Melbourne. Who, who would have guessed? Florida man. Florida man takes down <laughs> Hive ransomware threat actor group. Look for that story coming up. Way to go, DOJ. Um, Europol up in this business, the FBI. I want to uh, say thank you to uh, these law enforcement agencies for their due diligence, their due care, and their perseverance in uh, going after these large threat actor groups. Hive. Hive is a big one, guys. Hive is the one that took out... Um, I think Hive's the one that took out the Costa Rican government, right? Look at this. This is it from a threat advisory on November 17th, 2022 from CISA, right? Um, they are ransomware as a service model. So they're like Lockbit where, you know, they kind of expand quickly. Uh, 13 companies, 1,300 companies worldwide were attacked. Is Hive the one? Hive might be the one that said they, like, they were openly interested in attacking... Um, hospitals which is no bueno okay um trying to find a story that would outline who they attacked yeah the th guys this is probably why they went after him so hard i'm pretty sure hive's the one that said that they were like openly going after healthcare, and you know what guys i freaking told you like again again i'm super pumped i'm super pumped that hive's been taken down but just like this story right... Just like this story right here, dude. No, no, no. I'm sorry. This one. You want to talk about poking the bear? You want to talk about poking the bear? When you say we are actively going after healthcare in the United States, you can't poke a bear harder than that. We saw Colonial Pipeline. The swift response from the United States was just that, swift. You know, Hive, uh, you know, it'll be interesting. So with the FBI seizing the domain, there's a chance, there's a high probability that they have done a very coordinated effort. If it's anything like the Emotet takedown that the FBI did, not only did they bring the site down, but they also executed raids on all the key players involved in the Hive ransomware threat actor group at the same time to basically completely cut the head off and get control of the backend infrastructure, which I would assume happened in this case. Unfortunately, because it is a you know FBI, Europol type case, it's unlikely that there's going to be a lot of details coming out in the next, say, year as the case is mounted and as people are um, you know, put in jail and stuff like that. But we will get some information on it, hopefully. I personally am super excited to get more information. Way to go. Boom, roasted. Way to go. All right, guys. So that's the bonus story. Shout out and thanks to Eric Taylor. Eric Taylor from Barricade Cyber Solutions. You may remember him from the read at the beginning of the show. He's the one who provided that intel for the news story. So thank you very much, Eric Taylor. All right, guys. If you're here for the news, that's the show. So thank you very much. Please tune in. There is no Simply Cyber Live tonight at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. That show has been canceled for today. Uh, not because of any uh, reason, um, but I do have, uh, I, well, I had to cancel because the guest ha didn't respond to me, uh, but then I scheduled um, uh, some 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 uh, personal stuff in the evening, so it, no show today, okay? This song makes me want to, like, jump off a bridge. Um, okay, so if you're here for the jaw jacking, welcome to the party. Um, I'm kind of curious if I can do something really quickly. How many people we got in chat, guys? 
how many people we got in chat? We got 139. Let's do some jaw jack. And I'm kind of curious if I can do something that would be kind of cool. Oh, thanks, Neon Nomad. Thanks, Cyber Munchkin. My pleasure, guys. I'm here to serve. Brady McNulty, after hours on a Thursday. No, I've got some personal matters to attend to, Brady. But it's good to see you in chat. People loving Brady McNulty's... Um, um uh pharmacist into cyber i've got another uh role into cyber coming uh pretty soon accountant into cyber so don't think the accountants can't uh can't do that How gifted subs i was gonna gift a bunch of subs to unlock that new emote how do i do that do i have to be like watching the stream on the stream Stay tuned. I'm trying to do something cool here. Hold on. Where are we at? Where are we at? How do I... <sighs> join? Do I have to join? I have to be a squad member to share s subs? Okay. Let me do that. Hold on one second. I want to, I want to gift a bunch of subs. Give me a second. Okay. Um, okay, hold on one second. Okay. Hold on, Cyber Munchkin. I, hold on. So I just joined the squad. <laughs> I had to join the squad. Cyber Munchkin, gift and subs. Thanks so much. All right. So now that I'm a member, how do I... I'm a member. How do I... How do I... How do I, um, how do I gift subs, guys? I'm trying to gift a sub. Thank you, Cyber Munchkin. How do I gift a sub? I'm trying to gift subs, guys. I'm trying. Computer? Oh, here we go. I found it. Oh, wow, huh? Hold on one second. This is a little different than I thought. The alpha? Okay. All right, so let me see how many subs I need in order to unlock the emote. Sorry, I'm doing this. Like, please talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, here we go. All right, so trying to edit. I'm trying to emote, and it says I need to add 17 more subs. Okay, incoming. <laughs> incoming. There we go. Love it, love it, love it, guys. Thanks for staying for the jaw jacking. This is how we do it. Stay tuned for tomorrow's stream when I will be having HAL 9000 as a new emote. Enjoy that, Ryan. Enjoy that, Ross. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you so much, everybody. Genuinely appreciate all of you. Enjoy that, Edward. Enjoy that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did we just become best friends? Yep. That's for Cyber Munchkin. Thank you, Cyber Munchkin. What? Did we just become best friends? Yep. That's that's for, for me, I guess. <laughs> it's raining subs. Good times, guys. All about good times on the stream. I, I, I appreciate it. Um, you know, the 25 new members to the sub. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Grab all those up. And I will uh, happily um, update the emotes on uh later today Let's see if i can do it right now actually that'd be kind of cool if i could do it right now stay with me oh my god here we go is it unlocked now oh it still says 17 more so it hasn't registered yet so stay tuned. Yes, one of us. One of us. That's right. So, yeah. So basically, guys, this is what I'm. Um, 
this is what I'm gonna do, okay? This is uh, this is gonna be the Chat GPT emote as soon as I can unlock it, okay? You guys like the Chat GPT logo? Let me know. We'll we'll be doing that one. All right, and then um, hopefully everybody got those twenty subs. Genuinely appreciate it. Um, and then. What, what other thing? Oh, just, I guess since we're jaw jacking and you guys are here, I did want to share with you. I'm working on two new videos right now. Here are the, um, the thumbnails, this one right here. And then this is the other thumbnail. I don't know if you guys think those are cool or not. I think they're kind of cool, but one, one is about how to get experience without a job in cybersecurity, right? That whole catch 22. And the other one is like, is there any actually entry level jobs in cyber? The answer is yes, and in the video I talk about how, or what they are and how to get them. So stay tuned for that. Kind of fun. Kind of having some fun here. Nice. All right, guys. That's going to do it. Um, enjoy enjoy the gifted subs. Thank you again, Cyber Munchkin. Thank you again to all of you squad members and Simply Cyber community members for being here, for having a good time. Good morning, Philippines. Michael Vito. Guys, I'm going to boogie out of here. I got a meeting in four minutes. I'm going to run downstairs and say hello to the my wife. I didn't uh, get to see her really because I had to teach this morning. Be good, everybody. Stay. T uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Thanks for everything. And until next time, stay secure.